Good day to you viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Price Secretary of British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Do we've got a Columbia record 5343, and it's one of the political uh, records made for the 1929 election. This is the Labour Party, part 6, I think that is, the Labour Party and Unemployment. Speech by the, R uh, the Right Honourable J.R. Klein's MP. I think a lot of Blairite MPs are going to be unemployed soon. Serves them right. Here we go. Periods of acute unemployment have recurred for generations of time. Many other evils, social and physical, have confronted mankind. But these evils have been resisted and have been greatly reduced. Unemployment, when endured in such distressing degree as we know it today, can be attacked and overcome. It is something new for this to be said by other political parties. But for the Labour Party to say this, it's quite commonplace and old. For 40 years we have pleaded for the right to work, and we have implored the country to regard useful or productive service as an obligation which none should escape. Those who do not work live upon the labour of those who do, and great groups of idlers not only impose upon other people the burden of providing a living for them, but they involve many other losses in reduced efficiency and character, and they become generally a social danger. During a war period, work is found for all. Every energy is expended to resist aggression and to ensure a victory. That energy is expended to destroy. Now we believe that in times of peace, men who cannot find an employer should be made by the nation, secure for service and by their work, create wealth which would be a blessing to their country. That wealth would be in place of the crushing charges amounting to more than a million pounds a week, now being paid to keep our unemployed alive, doing nothing. To those who ask how can we afford to find work, we answer that we cannot any longer afford not to find it. The greatest waste is in idleness, and wealth accrues only from the work of hand and brain. The Labour Party is convinced that productive service can be organized in order to absorb the greater part of the unemployed, who, being changed, from burdensome idlers into wage earners and wage spenders would thereby make a demand for the work of many others. The Labour Party would deal effectively with these problems if given a mandate for its plans. Its plans have in detail often been put before Parliament in bills and resolutions and have been scornfully rejected by men who are now being driven to adopt them. During the few months of 1924, when Labour had office without power, its policy substantially lessened the number of the unemployed, while wages rose and exports increased. Everything would be done by a Labour government to secure the overseas markets, which we must have, and we would use to the full our great internal resources in order that hundreds of thousands of ready and willing men and women, now doomed to idleness, should be usefully employed. The solution of many other questions waits upon the settlement of this one, and it would pay the country to pay wages in exchange for the material and moral wealth produced by employment, and put an end to the scandal of giving millions of pounds for nothing whatever. There we are, viewers. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you and goodbye.